Welcome to this video lecture series on antenna and wave propagation. In this video, we'll discuss an array of anisotropic point sources of antenna of same amplitude and same phase. So till now we have discussed an array of two point antenna elements only. We have discussed various cases in it and same like that we have various things on which the final radiation pattern would depend on this endpoint antenna element array also. So we saw that the final radiation pattern would depend upon many things like the distance between the two antennas, the placement of the reference. So now we are taking the distance between all the antennas to be D. All antennas have same distance which is D, the placement of reference. So now in this case I am taking my reference to be placed at antenna 1. Now the third point is the placement of the final point P. So the placement of the final point P at is at an angle phi. So these are the cases on which my final radiation pattern would depend. So now I have to see what is the phase between all the elements of the array and for that I need to see which element is leading and which element is lagging. So you can see from this diagram that the radiations from element N is reaching the point P fastest then the radiations from all the other elements. So I can say that the radiation from N is leading or the radiations from antenna 1 is lagging the most. The radiations from antenna 1 is reaching the point P in largest time. So antenna 1 is lagging the most. So I can say antenna 1 is lagging with respect to all other antennas and antenna N is leading with respect to all other antennas. So now I have to find out how much these antennas are leading or how much these antennas are lagging with respect to each other. So now in this case I am taking the same phase. So all the antennas are leading or lagging with respect to each other with same phase. So I need to find out what is this phase. So I am taking antenna 1 and antenna 2 and now I can say that the radiations from antenna 1 and antenna 2 are reaching the point P. As you can see this from this diagram as well that radiations are reaching the point P. So now if I draw a perpendicular from antenna 2 to antenna 1 radiation, so this is my 90 degree. So now I can say that from this point and this point my radiations are traveling in equal distance in equal time. So I can say this much is my phase difference. So antenna 1 is lagging with respect to antenna 2 with this much phase difference. So I need to calculate this length to calculate my phase difference. So I know that the distance between antenna 1 and antenna 2 is D and I also know that the point is at an angle phi. So I need to find out this base of this right angle triangle. So now when I see this right angle triangle in this right angle triangle, if this length is D and this angle is phi, I can say that this length would come out to be D cos phi. So my phase distance would come out to be proportional to D cos phi plus alpha alpha is any phase. So when I need to find out the phase angle, I have to remove this sign of proportionality. When I remove this sign of proportionality, I get this term called beta. Beta is a constant which is equal to 2 pi by lambda. So I get the phase angle as psi which is equal to beta d cos phi plus alpha. So now I need to find out the final radiation pattern which is reaching the point P. So for that I am considering that all sources are of same amplitude. What does it mean? that all sources are fed by some current. So if I have n sources, I am supplying some current and I am taking these sources to be similar. So these sources have similar impedance 
all the impedance of all the sources are same so when same current is applied to it and they have same impedance same electric field would produce i can verify this from ohm's law if i have same current and same impedance the electric field would produce which would be same so now i can say that e1 is equal to e2 is equal to e3 up to is equal to en is equal to e0 so now i can say that all the antennas are having same electric field which is equal to e0 and the phase angle of all the antennas vary by a factor which is equal to beta d cos phi plus alpha so now i need to find out the final electric field so same like we used to do in two point antenna array now we'll proceed with this so in two point antenna array we used to see the phase and the magnitude of all the antennas and then we used to add that so now we'll see the phase of antenna 1 2 3 and so on up to n and we know that the magnitude of electric field is e not now we need to add the e not and its phase for every antenna and then we'll find out the final electric field so from antenna 1 i know that if the reference is at antenna 1 it has no phase antenna 1 is present at the reference it has zero phase so it can be represented by a term called e not with zero phase so i can represent e raised to power zero which is one so i can represent it by simply e not now i can say that antenna 2 is leading i can see again from this diagram that antenna 2 is leading with respect to antenna 1 the rays from antenna 2 are reaching the point p faster than the rays from antenna 1 so i can say antenna 2 is leading so i know the factor by which antenna 2 is leading also which is equal to psi so the phase angle would be equal to e raised to power j psi e raised to power j psi because it is leading so e raised to power plus j psi again i can see that antenna 3 is leading with respect to antenna 2 so how much it is leading i'll again make a perpendicular distance again this distance is d again this angle is phi and again this is 90 degree so this length would come out to be d cos phi now when i join this parallel line i'll get this length to be d cos phi so this length is d cos phi this length is d cos phi so antenna 3 is leading with respect to antenna 1 with a phase which is d cos phi plus d cos phi which is 2d cos phi so antenna 3 so now we need to find out how much antenna 4 is leading how much antenna 5 is leading and so on up to n now as you can see this is antenna 4 again this length is d again this would come out to be d cos phi so d cos phi plus d cos phi plus d cos phi so antenna 4 so now when i need to find out the magnitude and phase of electric field from antenna 3 i'll see how much it is leading with respect to antenna 1 so it is 2d cos phi which is equal to twice of psi So now I can represent the electric field from antenna three to be e naught and phase to be e raised to power two j psi, because it is leading with respect to twice of psi. Similarly, I can represent the electric field and phase of all the antennas up to n. So now electric field and phase of antenna n would be represented as e naught e raised to power n minus one j psi. So now when I need to find out the final electric field at point P I add all these electric fields. So the final electric field at point P is given by E is equal to E not which is electric field from antenna 1 plus E not E raised to power j psi electric field from antenna 2. Plus e not e raised to power two j psi electric field from antenna three up to n, which is e not e raised to power n minus one j psi e not e raised to power n minus one j psi. 
Now I need to simplify this. I'll take E naught to be common. Now I'll term it as equation 1. Now I need to again simplify it. I'll multiply this equation by a term E raised to power J psi. You'll see why I'm doing it in the later section. So when I multiply all these terms by e raised to power j psi, I'll find out the final e which would come out to be e raised to power j psi multiplied by e raised to power j psi would come out to be e raised to power 2 j psi. Similarly, e raised to power 2 j psi multiplied by e raised to power j psi. Because the base is same, now we'll add the powers. So, 2j psi plus j psi would come out to be e raised to power 3j psi. Similar thing happen and we will left out with e raised to power n j psi. Now, I will term this equation as 2. So, now when I subtract equation 2 from equation 1, I left out with So now we can see that all these terms are with minus sign and all these terms are with positive signs. So I can say that these terms would be cancelled out with each other because e raised to power j psi minus e raised to power j psi would be 0. I will get 0. So I will cancel out these terms up to e raised to power n minus j psi. So I am left out with. So now I further need to do the simplification. So now I need to do the further simplification. For further simplification, I am taking e raised to power n j psi by 2 common from this term and e raised to power j psi by 2 common from this term. So I am left out with e raised to power j psi by 2 common e as it is. Now when I take e raised to power j psi by 2 common from 1, I am left out with e raised to power minus j psi by 2 and from here I am left out with e raised to power j psi by 2. Similarly, here when I take e raised to power and j psi by 2 common, I am left out with e raised to power minus n j psi by 2 minus e raised to power n j psi by 2. So now again simplifying it, I need to find out E. So taking these things this side, I am left out with Now I know that the formula of sin theta looks like this. So if I take minus common from here and minus common from here, the minus terms would cancel out and these terms would look like the formula of sin theta where theta is equal to n psi by 2 here and psi by 2 here. So now replacing this term by sin. So I left out with E is equal to. So when I am taking E raised to power j psi by 2 upside because the base is same, the powers would subtract when the ba same base is divided. So, I am left out with this term called e raised to power n minus 1 j psi by 2. So, now simplifying this term while putting the formula for sin theta, I am left out with. So, now cancelling out 2j, 2j terms. So, now here I know that e raised to power something would give me the angle. So, this represents the angle which is dependent upon the position of the reference. So, I can find out E. So, now E is represented as E naught sin n psi by 2 upon sin psi by 2 and an angle which is n minus 1 psi by 2. So, angle is n minus 1 psi by 2. 
So this gives me the final electric field which comes out from N point isotropic antenna array of same amplitude and same phase. So now I am interested in finding the array factor. So array factor is given by the electric field divided by its maximum value. So now when I put psi is equal to 0, in this formula, I will get 0 by 0 form. So now applying L orbital rule in this equation, I will get So now when I take limit of psi tends to 0 in this formula, I left out with sine of 0 divided by sine of 0, which is 0 by 0 form. So by applying L orbital rule, I am left out with E is equal to E naught derivative of sine with respect to psi upon derivative of sine with respect to psi. So, I will get So now I am left out with E naught and cos n psi by 2 upon cos psi by 2 limit psi tends to 0. So when I put psi is equal to 0 in this formula, I am left out with. So I know that cos of 0 is 1. So I can find out E max is equal to E naught n. So now I can find out the array factor. Array factor was E divided by E max. So E max would be E naught n. Now when I divide this E by E max which is E naught n, I will get the array factor. So array factor, I am representing array factor by AF is equal to When I am taking my value of psi to be very small, so I am taking my psi is nearly equal to 0. So at that time sine of psi, sine of psi by 2 is nearly equal to psi by 2. So replacing sine of psi by 2 with psi by 2, I will get the final array factor. So array factor. So now this is how I will calculate my final array factor. So I will stop at this point for this video. I hope you understood how I found out the electric field for an isotropic point sources and how I found out the array factor. So I hope you like this video. Like this video, subscribe my channel and stay tuned for the further videos. Thank you.